as the uh, congregation. And uh, so please come to your feet. And before we get into the then turn your hymnals to the little red book in front of you, to 262. 262. And if you're able to stand, stand and remain seated. What a wonderful thing it is to see the tell you that no matter what you have done, what you have been through or going through right now, mm -hmm. that he loves you. Right. There is one person who wants to tell you that if you repent of your sin mm -hmm. and come to faith in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. he will wash you in his blood. Yes. There is one person mm -hmm. who wants to tell you that there is no sin so great, mm -hmm. he will not forgive you for it. Yes. And the question is, why would God forgive an old wretched sinner like myself? Mm -hmm. And the answer is very clear. Mm -hmm. Because he loves me yeah, yeah. and because he loves you. Yes, yes. God so loved the world. Yes. It is because of his love for you and me that he is our way out from death and destruction. Mm -hmm. And his name is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The name above every name. Mm -hmm. Now in this passage, the Lord Jesus brings us an important message from God, his Father. He tells us something we really need to listen to this morning, 
and you can hang up if you choose. Mm -hmm. But I would advise you to hold the line this one. The Lord has something to say to you, so please hold for an important message from God. Uh -huh. And I believe this one verse says it all. In this one verse, that are there are three messages. Mm -hmm. God wants to wants to save, wants to save and unsave to hear. Mm -hmm. And the first message God wants us to hear about is His love for us. Mm -hmm. God's love for us is not filial feel, uh, love, mm -hmm. and that means affectionate love. Mm -hmm. That's where Philadelphia gets its name from. The uh, Philadelphia. Brotherly love. Amen. Right. Now, Phil is love without romantic, uh, uh, romantic attraction and occurs between friends or family members. Mm -hmm. But God, and God's love for us is not pragma, enduring love. Pragma is a unique, unique bonded love that matures mm -hmm. over many years. Mm -hmm. God's love for us is not storge, familiar love. God's love for us is not eros, romantic love. Mm -hmm. God's love for us is not ludus, playful love. Mm -hmm. God's love for us is not mania, obsessive love. Mm -hmm. And God's love for us is not philatia, self-love. Mm -hmm. But God's love for us, mm -hmm. and hear me clearly, is agape love. Yeah. Selfless love. Yeah. A love that says, I love you unconditionally, mm -hmm. and it is the highest type of love. And the source of love is not human love, which is based, is biased, and often impure as is to its motives. Mm -hmm. Human love is selfish and is usually given out on the basis of what we can hope to receive in return. Mm -hmm. God's love is not like that at all. His love is always pure. Mm -hmm. It's always holy. It's always seeking what is best for the object it loves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His love is given freely without the hope or desire for anything in return. Mm -hmm. God loves us because God is love. Yes. Yes. It is not a love that loves you today and hates you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's not a love that is measured by what you have done for me. Mm -hmm. It's not a love that changes based on the direction in which the wind is blowing. Yes. God's love is, the, is this. The Lord has appeared of old unto me saying, yea. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Yes. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Mm -hmm. Which means his love is never ending. Mm -hmm. And God love is, we love him because he loved us first. Yes. Which means his love is always given first. Mm -hmm. Now, allow me to say, if someone really loves you, and I'm talking about agape love, uh -huh. they will always be willing to make the first move is showing their love towards you mm -hmm. by holding by by not holding things against you. Mm -hmm. Because love is patient, <coughs> love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast. Yes. It is not proud, yes. it is not rude, mm -hmm. it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angry. Yes. It keeps no record of wrong, and love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. Mm -hmm. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes. Always persevere. Yes. Yes. Love never fails. Yes. Yes. And if I say that to say, I say all that to say God is love, and his love is precious beyond words. His love is not even describable for us to concern. Because let somebody get mad at us. We, we could be hunky door, we could be friends forever. But let one of us cross each other, then that love is gone. Yes, yes, yes. Even the things that we have done in this life, once we have come to faith in Jesus Christ, we fall, we stumble, we stumble into sin. We do a lot of things that is contrary to God. Mm -hmm. but, but because we are his children, yes. mm -hmm. he never yeah. stops loving us. Yes. Amen. He don't write us off and, he don't, and his, his feelings toward us don't change like the wind blows. Amen. Once you belong to God, you are his and he's placed you in his family, and he will love you forever. Amen. And let me say, what is the scope of God's love? Well, it's right here in the text. God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. The word so indicates the depth of his love. Mm -hmm. It describes the matter of his love for fallen men, women, boys, and girls. It is a deep love that motivated him to send his only begotten son yes. to die for the lost, to die for you and me. Amen. And this is uncommon love. This is God's love. Now notice the object of God's great love or the apple of his eye. Mm -hmm. it, and, and the apple of his eye is his people. 
And when I say his people, his children, those he have been cre he created, it is the world. It says, so God so loved the world. But by his very definition, this love is no ordinary love. It is a special love that seeks to give itself away on behalf of the objects loved. And of course, this should not surprise us. After all, to love is the very nature of God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Amen. So regardless of the curveballs life may have delivered to you, you need to know today that if no one else loves you, God loves you. And I don't care if you are broken, bruised, and burdened. I don't care if you're disobedient, weak, and reckless, damaged, depressed, dogged out, downtrodden, or down low. Jesus loves you. Yeah. And I don't care if you're sick, suffering, and a sinner, anguished, afflicted, and worried, tempted, tried, and tortured, Jesus loves you. Yeah. I don't care if you're lost, lame, and least, overcast, overlooked, and overtaken, yeah. poor, persecuted, and led astray, Jesus loves you. And there's no one beyond the scope of his love. The greatest thought to take hold of the human mind is this. Jesus loves me. This I know. Yes. Because the Bible tells me so. Right. And the second greatest thought is this. There is nothing you can do to make God stop loving you. But Romans chapter 8, verses 38 through 39 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, yes. nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh -huh. And let me say, that means nothing, nothing on this earth, nothing that the eyes can't see, nothing in the heavens or the stars will stop God from loving you. I don't care what you've done, I don't care what, what you've been through in the past, if you come to faith in Jesus Christ, God will receive you into his family and wash you of your sins and will save you forever. Yes. Amen. You see, once he gets a hold to you, he'll never let you go. Yes. Because now you are his child. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes. Yes. Well, let me say, but sadly, my brothers and sisters, even though God loves the just as well as the unjust, uh -huh. there's coming a time where the sheep will be separated from the goats. Uh -huh. And the goats being the unjust. And there's also a time coming called the great white throne judgment. Uh -huh. When the unjust will be judged and cast into the lake of fire. Uh -huh. But allow me to say, there's still room in God's kingdom. Uh -huh. There's still room at his table. And there's still room in heaven for you. Uh -huh. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, uh -huh. there's no better time than the present. Uh -huh. To come to Jesus by faith so that you might be saved. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the sacrifice of God's love is the true value of God's, or true value of love, which lies in what love is willing to give to the objects it loves. You see, God loves, God's love is not static or self-centered. His love does not just sit quietly by, by women, by men, by men, women, boys, and girls drop off into hell. His love prompts him to do something for those same men, women, boys, and girls Amen. that he loves. Amen. In other words, God put his word to action by sending Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. There's a story of a man that called his girlfriend and said, Darling, I love you. I will cross the burning sands for you. I will fight a jungle full of lions for you. I will fight, protect, and defend your honor just to be with you because I love you. That's what he said to But his actions were this. And if it doesn't rain tonight, I'll be over to see you. Come on, somebody. Come on, but no rain, no sleep, no snow, no tornadoes or hurricanes will stop God. Yes, yes. In other words, I don't care what you're going through in life. You might not be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel, yes. but all you have to do is call on Jesus. Yes, yes. Yes. Call on Jesus, and it may not, he might not be there when you want him to be there, but he's always on time. Yes. You see, that's what love does. Love is an action word. It's not a passive word. It's an action word. Come on, somebody. Yes. So if I'm struggling in this life, I, can, I am guaranteed that Jesus will be there to him. Yes, yes Lord. And let me say, God's love was seen in his actions and was shown in the gracious gift of his son, Jesus Christ. 
on the cross. The death of Jesus Christ for sinners is the greatest, most visible, and the absolute final word concerning God's love for, for humanity. For God committed his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. And the word also says, greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. You see, you can search the whole world over looking for love. You can look for love in all the wrong places. But let me tell you, you do not have to look any further yeah. than the bloody cross on Calvary's cross to see the extent of God's love for you and for me. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, God loves the dope dealers and the, dope and the drug addicts. He loves the male and female prostitutes. He loves the single mom who has had six children born out of wedlock. He loves the no-for-good fathers who do not take care of their children. He loves self-centered and lying presidents as well as crooked and shady politicians. He loves the liars, the gossipers, the fornicators, and the sexually immoral. And why? Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, he loves them because he wants no man, no woman, no boy or girl to perish but to have everlasting life. Amen. And there's no sin so great that God's love will not forgive you for if you confess with your mouth yes. Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior yes. and know in your mind, body, and soul that God has raised him yes. from the dead. Yes. My Bible says that you may be saved, no. that you shall be saved, yes. which means God ain't going to save you then yes. and leave you tomorrow. Yes. It doesn't say you, all it, all it takes is faith in Jesus Christ yes. to be adopted in God's family. Yes. You see, a lot of people don't want to hear that. A lot of people want to think we come from aliens. A lot of people want to hear a lot of other things, but these 66 books have been proved historically and scientifically. And we need to know there ain't nothing, ain't nobody can do you like Jesus. I mean, think about it for a moment. I, with all the stuff we go through in life, if it wasn't for God's grace, a lot of us wouldn't be here today. If, if it wasn't for God's grace, some of us could be locked up in prison. Amen. 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 If it wasn't for God's grace, we could have cancer could have taken my life. Amen. Amen. So I know there's a God. Yes. And I know there's a God that loves me. Yes. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. Amen. So hold on for this important message from God. So God has a message about his love for us. And my second point is, God has a message for us about life. God has not, has, was not content to see man or woman lost in sin. He was not content to watch humanity march off into endless torment. God declared man worthy of his love, his grace, and his mercy. But if a man or woman say, no, there is no God, but do not have a relationship, uh, but do, and do not have a relationship with his son, Jesus, do not understand the fullness of God's grace, God's love, and God's mercy. Because he or she is spiritually blind to the things of God due to a carnal, worldly mind. Mm -hmm. And let me say, the Bible is clear that Satan is the prince of the age. Yes. Which means he in, he's in control of government systems. He in, he's in control of the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many of y'all believe that? Amen. 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 All the wickedness, all the sin, all the sickness yes. that we see in this world is, 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 is part of Satan's plan. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And he is the prince of the air. And that's yes. why our faith should only be in Jesus Christ and not the things of the world. Yes. Because this is, this is not our home. Amen. We're aliens here. Yes. In a sense. We're strangers. We're pilgrims in a foreign land. Yes, Lord. But one day Jesus is coming back. Yes. And he's coming back to those who, whom he have a relationship with. Yes. He's coming back for God's children. Amen. Amen. And if you know him as your Lord and Savior, Amen. give God some praise. Amen. If you know that he's coming back for you, give God some praise. See, there's nothing good about me. Yes. Nothing at all. Because Romans chapter 8, verse 7 says, because the carnal mind is em enmity or hostile against God, but is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. In other words, lost people who possess worthy minds are hostile toward God and his ways 
because of disobedience and our enemies of God. Before we all came to faith in Christ, we were all enemies of God. Yes. But in spite of man's sinful condition, in spite of the fact that natural man hates God and opposes all God stands for, God still saw value in human life. Yes. Now, the value we attach to life is seen in abortions, mass shootings, and a crime rate that's off the charts. The world does not love, care, or value people's life anymore. People around you may question your worth, but God declares you to be worth his son in spite of yourself. Yeah, right. Right. The world is so caught up in the many worries of life, but God mentioned the ultimate worry of life. He uses the word perish. And this word means to destroy, to give over to the misery of hell. Now, there's a worry greater than cancer. Greater than losing a child in death and greater than losing a spouse. Yes. The most horrible thing that can happen to anyone is for them to live their entire life without a relationship with the Lord. Yes. And to die and go straight to hell. Yes. Nothing in this world or eternity can be compared with dying without Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. And why? Because of what the Bible said to those who die without him. Psalms chapter 9 verse 17 says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 8 through 9 says in flame and fire taking revenge on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. And from the glory of his power. Mm -hmm. In other words, it is going to be a great gift of warning one day. Yes. For the saved and the unsaved. Mm -hmm. But here's the difference. The unsaved will spend eternity in hell. While those who have come to faith in Jesus will spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. Mm -hmm. And let me say, there is no thought more horrible than the thought of going to hell forever. And with no hope, release, reprieve, or probation. Come on, somebody. Yeah. If there's a heaven, you better believe there's a hell. Yeah. 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 Yet, there, yet that will be the faith of countless billions. Mm -hmm. And let me say that there will be, be even religious people in hell, too. Mm -hmm. See, religion don't save you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Your good works don't save you. Being a good person doesn't save you. The only thing that Amen. saves you is by confessing with your mouth Jesus Christ Amen. as your Lord and Savior. Amen. And knowing your heart, God has raised him from the dead. Yeah. The Bible says you shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Which means, in other words, there's no other way. Yes. There's no other way to the Father but through Jesus Christ. Yes. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. And the only way to the Father is through me. Right. Which means, I like saying yes. this, you can't go around it, yes. you can't go under it, yes. and you can't go over it. Yes. You've yes. got to come through the door. Yes. And that yes. door is Jesus Christ. Yes. And, and you can't, and, 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 and when you die, it's going to be too late. Uh -huh. So it's, it's no better time than the present if you have not come to faith in Jesus Christ than to come to faith in him. Uh -huh. You see, my thing is, I got a mama up there. I got a daddy with Jesus. I, they knew the Lord, and I want to see my family again. Yeah. And the thing is, is that the only way I'm going to see my family is by, is by me coming to faith in Jesus and living my life for Jesus. Yeah. See, you can be saved. You can say, you can quote Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. But the real work comes in being obedient to his word. Mm -hmm. Not living like the way we used to live. <laughs> Not hanging out. In, in, in where we used to hang out at. Not slipping and sliding and creep or hitting the corner and everything else. Which means we don't live that old life anymore. Come on somebody. And, and God gives us the ABCs and one through threes in his word on how to live this life. All we have to do is get into the word and study the word of God. And here's, the, here's, here's, the, here's the thing though. God has placed his Holy Spirit in us. So we have a confidence. We have a helper to help us in this life, in which I call our Christian journey. Uh -huh. But the thing is, is that you got to know Jesus. You have to have a relationship with him in order to 
benefits, and I call them benefits, y'all, from the, the blessings that he bestowed upon us. Amen. Now, and like I said, there's going to be religious people there in hell as well. Because Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, 21 says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, yes. shall enter That's into right. the kingdom of heaven. Yes. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So if you're a hell raiser, and if you doing things that's contrary to God, all I can tell you is, is get right with God right now. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, Pastor. My cousin, Minister Morgan Clark Jr., sent me something a few years ago. And it said, some of y'all didn't try God. Y'all just tried church. All right now. And when the church hurts you, or you found that out that liars, fornicators, and fake people also go to church, you concluded that God ain't real or that Christianity is a joke. But if people could make you walk away from God, you were never in a relationship with him in the start. You were just in religion. Come on, somebody. My thing, if you are a born-again believer, if you love Jesus Christ, you are going to do things his way. And one thing we know about Jesus Christ, because if I have the Holy Spirit in me, guess who else I have in me? God the Father and God the Son. And let me tell you, Christians love to be with Christians. Amen. Amen. And I think our, our secretary gave a scripture during the announcements, do not forsake the fellowship of ourselves together. And, and God had, he meant that with a purpose. He meant something by that. Because how are we to be edified? How are we to be built up? How are we know, how are we going to know which way to live or go in this way if we're not studying the word of God with our brothers and sisters? Amen. Come on, somebody. See, you need the word of God and not religion. Because our religion is going to work on Monday, Tuesday, Friday. Come on now. Amen. 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 But work ain't going to save me. Yes. No. My pocketbook ain't going to save me. Yes. My bank account ain't going to save me. No. And just because my mom and daddy were saved don't mean that I'm saved. Come on, Come on somebody. Amen. Salvation is to the individual Amen. and not to the group. Amen. We need to know that Jesus came to this world to die for each and every one of our sins. He gave us a way out. God gave us a way out. And, his son, and the way out is Jesus Christ. Yes. And all we have to do is come to faith in him. Yes. And once you come to faith in him, God takes care of the rest. Yes. And all you have to do is be obedient to his word and to his will in your life. Yes. And do not be a religious person. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible is very clear. Ain't none of us good. Only God is good. Right. So stop trying to do so stop, stop trying to be good or do good by people because you never will be. Yeah, yeah. And the truth of the matter is this. Religion does not save you, mm -hmm. but your relationship with Jesus Christ does. Yeah. Yeah. Also knowing that there's a God, being good and doing the right thing will not save you either. Being saved requires you and me to be totally sold out for Jesus Christ. Yeah. And there's no other way because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. But the good news is, my brothers and sisters, is not everyone will experience the flames of hell. Those who have come to faith in Jesus Christ will enjoy everlasting life. Amen. We are in a state of being in which we can never die. Amen. Did that go over your head? No. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we can never die. That's right. Amen. Those who come to Christ will die once. Mm -hmm. And after dying comes the judgment. Mm -hmm. Now, those who have not come to faith in Christ dies twice. Mm -hmm. They die of this physical body. Mm -hmm. And once they go before their great white throne, they die and uh, their spiritual body dies as well. Mm -hmm. Which means, and, and they will spend, spend eternity in heaven. Mm -hmm. And I'm breaking this down for you because I don't want nobody here to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I want everybody here to who have not received Jesus Christ to come to faith in him. Amen. I'm a witness, I'm, I, and I can testify that he is better than anything that you can ever imagine. Amen. He's better than cornbread, he's better than chitlins, collard greens, enchiladas, all of them. He's better than everything that you think is the best thing in this world. And, 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 and I know what he's done for me. I know what he's did for me, done for me, and what he's doing is going to do for me. So I thank God for him. I thank God that he thought of me enough. I thank God that he loved me enough to send his son to die for my sin. And let me say, because we are in the state that we can never die, 
Jesus, we know, the Prince of Life. And we're alive forevermore in Him. And death may claim these bodies, but the spirit of the redeemed will live on with Jesus in heaven. And the difference between the saved man and a lost man lies in one word, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me ask you, do you know him for yourself? Yeah. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Have you come to faith in my Lord and Savior? Yes, yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. And if you know Jesus for yourself, then, all you, then you know all about the life I'm trying to describe. You see, because the moment you were saved, you became a partaker of his everlasting love. Eternal and new heavenly life. So that alone ought to make somebody want to share. Amen. Amen. See, a lot of people say, well, God can save you today and lose you tomorrow. Well, we, don't, we don't serve a, a bell mop. <laughs> we serve a real God. Yes. And yes. He's, once he got you, yes. he's got yes. you. Yes. Yes. He's not going to put his Holy Spirit in you yes. to, to tell his Holy Spirit to leave from you Amen. when you slip it before him. Uh -huh. Amen. Jesus died on the cross Amen. for our sins. It's for the sins of yesterday, yes. the sins yes. we may commit today, yes. and the sins we may commit in the future. Yes. When God said he's got you, he's, he's got, got you. you. Yes. yes. So God has a message of his love, a message of his life, and God has a message for you about liability. Jesus says right here in this one verse that the difference between the saved person who enjoys everlasting life and the lost person who perish is all wrapped up in the idea of belief. Here's the plan of salvation in the simplest form. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And I hope everyone in this room trusted, is trusted in Jesus this morning because only a fool wants to go to heaven. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Therefore, Amen. I believe that each person in this room and those who are watching has some type of hope of heaven, something that we all believe in. Amen. You see, the same man has trusted Jesus Christ, his finished work at the cross, and his resurrection from the dead as his only hope of salvation. Amen. But to the lost man who has not trusted Jesus, he that has the Son has life. And he that does not have the Son of God has no life. Mm -hmm. So the lost person may trust in many things, but God, because, but God, because of their own reason. Mm -hmm. If it cannot be proven in books, if it cannot be proven by social media, science, or philosophers, or what their eyes can see, they just don't trust God. Yeah. Yeah. Some church folks may be trusting in works, religion, and church membership, mm -hmm. but not trusting the one and the only person who can save the soul. Yeah. And allow me to bring it home for you this morning. Come on, right on. If you're not letting go of the things in your life and let God take control of the things in your life, you are not trusting God. Let me break it down a little for us. Trusting God means he is the pilot and not the co-pilot. He is the driver and not the passenger. Right. He is the head and not the tail. And he is the battery and not the cables. Right. Who right. is in charge of your life? The truth of the matter is this. If you go to hell, you will go because you did not trust Jesus as your Savior. It will not be God's fault and it will not be the church folks' fault. You will not be able to blame family or those hypocrites down at the church. If you die without Jesus, you will have no one to blame but yourself. My brothers and sisters, your parents cannot make the decisions for you. Your spouse cannot make the decision for you. Your friends cannot decide for you. And no one in this room can decide for you as well. Amen. But you need to choose this day whom you will serve. Amen. If you want to be saved and go to heaven, when you leave this world, this is a decision you must make as an individual because salvation is to the individual. And not because your husband, your wife, your mother, or your father is or was saved. And if you leave this world without Jesus, one day you will stand before God and be judged for your sins. You will be sent away into the lake of fire to be tormented there forever. On, the, on that day, you will have no one to blame but yourself. Not my words, but the word of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And there will be no one to point your finger at to blame. Mm -hmm. The blame will rest squarely on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 24, I said therefore unto you, 
that he shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. But here's the good news. For God so loved the world. Yes, yes. That he gave yes, his yes. only begotten Son. Uh, yes, yes. And that whosoever. 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 Yes, yes. Believing in Jesus Christ should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes, yes. There was a little boy who had no home and no family. So while running the streets one day, a police officer noticed that the boy was having some problems. So the officer asked the boy, why don't you just go home? And the little boy said, I don't have a home to go to. Okay. He said that my mother and father are dead and I don't have any family. And after hearing this, the officer said, go down the street about a mile and you will see a big cross that says, Jesus saves. Mm -hmm. And when you get there, knock on the door, and someone would ask you for the password. And the little boy said, but I don't know the password. So the police officer said, when they ask you for the password, the password is John 316. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So the little boy got to the door, and he knocked on it. And the owner asked him, do you have a password? Uh -huh. And the little boy said, yes, it's John 316. And the owner said, come on in and warm yourself by the fire. And as the little boy was warming himself, mm -hmm. he was thinking to himself, saying, I do, don't know what John 3.16 is. Mm -hmm. And the owner asked him, was he warm yet? Mm -hmm. And the little boy says, yes, sir, I'm warm. Mm -hmm. Then the owner said, come on in here and get you something to eat. Mm -hmm. And while he was eating, he continued to think to himself, that he still didn't know what John 3.16 was. Yes. Huh? So the man then asked the little boy, are you tired? Mm -hmm. The little boy said, yes, sir, I'm tired. And he told him to come on in and rest your weary soul. Uh -huh. So while the little boy was resting, he said, I still don't know what John 3.16 means. Mm -hmm. But in the middle of the night, while he was sleeping, mm -hmm. he got a revelation about what John 3.16 meant. Mm -hmm. And he said, I might not know what John 3.16 truly means, but I do know that it will bring you to the door of a man yes. that will show you some loving kindness. <laughs> I don't know exactly what it means, yes. but I do know that it will lead you to a fire that will keep you warm down, keep you warm down deep down on the inside. Yes. Uh -huh. He said, I just quite can't put my finger on it. Come on, man. But I do know that it, it will feed you when you're hungry uh -huh. and give you rest when you are weary. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm here to tell somebody this morning Come on, man. that if you don't know the man, yeah. I'm here to introduce them to you. The only difference is that you don't have to knock at his door and you don't have to figure out any password. Uh -huh. Because the word says, behold, uh -huh. I stand at the door yeah. and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and will sup with him and he with me. Yes. Can I tell you all that God loves you? Yes. And you're not too low to be lifted, too dirty to be clean, too cracked to be cured, too lost to be found, too broken to be fixed, too hurt to be healed, too fractured to be mended, too oppressed to be renewed, too wounded to be redeemed. Or too simple to be saved. Yes. So the next time you feel inadequate yes. or out of place, just remember that God loves you. Yes. You see, Noah got drunk. Uh -huh. Jacob was a liar. Yes. Samson was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. Uh -huh. David had an affair. Isaiah preached naked. Yes. But God so loved the world. Uh, yes. Jonah ran from God. Yes. Peter denied Christ three times. Martha worried about everything, and Mary Magdalene was cleansed of several demons. The Samaritan woman at the well was in relationship with five different men. Yes. And Paul persecuted Christians, but God so loved the world. Yes. I don't care what you have done, this dude, or going through right now. There's no sin so great yes. that God will not forgive you for. Amen. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. You see, God loves you. And if you come to faith in his son Jesus, you will not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. So let me ask you, have you tried my 
about Jesus. Yeah. And you try to want you for peace when you're hungry. Yeah. Give you water when you're thirsty. Yeah. Yeah. And you try to want when you can't see the end of the day, God will give you the sight to see. Yeah. How many of you know yeah. Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yeah. How, do you, how many of you know that he is a doctor in the sick room? Yeah. He will heal any disease you may have. Yeah. How many of you know that he loves you more than your wife or husband could ever yeah. love you? Yeah. How many of you know Jesus as the one who will be everything? How many of you know my Lord and Savior? Yeah. God so loved the world. Yeah. That's you. That's me. Yes. That he sent his only begotten son yes. in our place yes, to die for our sins. Yes. Yeah. And the Bible says, just come to faith in him. Mm -hmm. And when you come to faith in him, God's got you. Yes. Yes. And, he's going, and he won't lose you. Then you know why he's got you? Because the Holy Spirit will seal you mm -hmm. until the day of redemption. Mm -hmm. In other words, the Holy Spirit will keep holding you until Jesus comes back to get you. Yes. And let me say as the praise team comes. I like to say that God is on the line for you this morning. Mm -hmm. He's holding waiting for your response to his message. And what you and what will you do today? Yeah. Are you really saved? Mm -hmm. Have you truly, genuinely trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Mm -hmm. Have you been born again by the grace of God? And if you have not, He is knocking at your door. If you're saved, maybe you should get into the presence of God. Come on, praise Him this morning and thank Him for the time He rang your number and changed your life. I praise Him. I praise His name that I did not hang up the day. Jesus came calling. And my question is, how about you? And as you stand, as you come to your feet, the invitation is, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, please come. Repent of your sin and confess, and God will accept you to his family. If you would like to come for being a candidate for baptism, please come. If you would like to come to be part of the ministry here at New Life Missionary Baptist Church, please come. Mm -hmm. Just know whatever you need, yeah. it can all, not some, mm -hmm. not all, it can all be found in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The doors of the church are open.
Hey, put your hands together for our visitors. Amen. 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 I thank God for all the visitors that we received this morning. Amen. Amen. Families and friends. Amen. And I hope something was said to strengthen your walk with our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And I also hope that we see you again. Amen. 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 Um, we have a lot of things.